Hey guys, welcome back to Endeavor. Uh, so we're talking about grabbing onto guns, gun disarms, gun defenses, and particularly when we're talking about our seminars and structures of, of mass violence. Um, one of the biggest issues that we see oftentimes, and, and again, this is purely opinion on our side and what we feel and believe, uh, is gun disarms have their place, and we teach gun disarms. I have a, you know, a handgun in front of me, we'll talk about one-handed options, we'll talk about the concept of getting two hands on, if it's in nice and close, talk about the idea of being able to get a hold of the arm and things along those lines. We train the shit out of gun defenses here. But the one thing we want people to understand is there's a massive difference between a gun threat, somebody asking for money, telling me to go somewhere, all of this time and structure where I may be able to process information, I may be able to make a move on it and he hasn't started killing people yet, and the difference between somebody walking in and murdering people, shooting, actively moving person to person, a gun going off, bodies going down around me and things along those lines. That's the reality of the situation. With those circumstances, an active threat, somebody actively shooting, it is not as easy for somebody to understand the concept of getting a hand on a gun or getting two hands on a gun. I'm essentially bringing myself to a very small target and trying to use fine motor movement even though it's not the, the most complex variations of it. So we teach versions of these you know, takeaways where we're grabbing onto the guns, but I have to have the opportunity to do that. And the reality of it is, in most active shooter situations, which is what we're talking about specifically, you're really not gonna see that. Especially if we're going out and only teaching a three hour, four hour, maybe six hour course and only working on the gun grabs for about an hour or two, it's highly unlikely that anybody's be able to grasp that idea and that concept and that fine motor movement. And the reality of it is we know most people aren't gonna actually train it when they leave that seminar, which is unfortunate, but it's true. And I have to work in those, those spectrums. So where we really put our uh, kind of high premium on either controlling an arm, controlling the body. I mean, even the concept that if somebody's shooting and moving, just blasting into them for a half a second and then being able to grab and control them, for the most part, it is a lot more realistic approach to what we're going with. It's highly unlikely that I'm gonna be able to get two hands on a weapon or even get good gun control in some form or fashion to create any type of a gun disarm in these situations. So that's one of the reasons we put a high premium on our tackles, our wrap ups, and then really just learning that this is the bad part of the gun. I need to be aware where the bad part of the gun is. And no matter where I end up, whether I end up here, 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 any of those positions, that I have to make sure that that gun stays pointed off of me so that I can continue to control and I continue to strike from that point in time. So again, there's nothing wrong with the concept of learning gun disarms and getting a hold of them and striking with them. But the realities of learning that in a short period of time and then actively doing it when somebody is legitimately shooting, actively killing people, the whole purpose of these seminars and lectures is to get people to understand like, this is a very, very bad situation. It's just unlikely. It's not plausible in our eyes, okay? So we talk a lot about wrapping the arms up, wrapping the body up, getting them to the floor and controlling from that position. And nothing's gonna change if we have you know, some type of long gun in there, whether it's a shotgun, a rifle, anything else in between. Now, yes, I have a bigger platform. I may be able to get my hands a hold of, but even in this situation, if I was gonna go do it, I would rather encompass and wrap my entire body around the gun as opposed to try to get hands on it and try to manipulate from there. Again, any movement and miss in this. If I'm going to grab the gun and he simply just pulls the you know, front end down and gets it out of the way, I'm gonna miss that. He turns and jerks, I'm gonna miss that. But if I'm going for the entire body and I happen to encompass the gun in the process, or if I go for the gun and I wrap it up with big gross motor movement, I'm more likely to be able to control that. So our tackles, our wraps, these big kind of gross motor movements for what the time we have uh, students for, the situation and realities of the stress that they're gonna be going under in these types of situations, that's our go-to. We're gonna tackle, we're gonna wrap up, we're gonna grab, we're gonna understand staying off of the muzzle, right, is gonna be the best place. Do not let it point towards me and, and keep it as simple as that. And then honestly, be aggressive as possible. Once I get them into the floor, pin them against the wall, whatever it is, I generate force, I hit, I break, I rip at the gun, everything that I can. But we try to keep things very broad and general and gross motor, and that's the way we really want you guys to approach this. So play around with it, work with it, talk about the wraps, talk about the tackles. Again, not discrediting gun disarms in any way, shape, or form. We utilize them all the time. But we've got to understand the difference between a gun threat and someone actively killing people, the gun actively going off, them moving, them turning, them in a prep or prepared mode where they're actually going to be fighting back in that instance. So 
play around with that guys. We'll see you next time here at Endeavor.